Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I'm doing a custom for a, sort of a celebration for the Facebook group we created um, as an offshoot from the Outlaw Speed Shop Facebook page called Custom Diecast Renegades and Hoodlums. And uh, Steve Mance over at Gunslinger Garage actually brought it up that it was the one-year anniversary, and I figured I'd try something a little bit different. Um, you know, I love vans. So I figured I'd tackle this Dodge. Uh, I think it's a 77. I'm not 100% sure. Somebody can let me know if I'm wrong. Um, other than that, if you guys like this content, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell for the notifications. So I wanted to try something a little bit different. And... and um, little spoiler alert it didn't work out <laughs> um, but I went I went through with it anyways um, on a scale of 1 to 10 10 being very pleased with the way this came out um, probably a 4 maybe a 5 but um, I decided to post this anyways because not all projects go according to plan and a lot of times you know what what you envision in your head and what your hands are able to do or uh, it just doesn't always work out or what you thought something was gonna look like doesn't look as good as it does in your head <laughs> so um, this one is kind of a prime example um, as you can see me struggling trying to get this off without breaking the plastic base um, not all this only has one post uh, and it's in the rear the grill actually pops into the front and secures it that way so you know I've done these before they're pretty basic you got the the big window uh, that pretty much is like a moon roof then you got a huge plastic interior with uh, multiple seats and nitrous bottles so I'm not quite sure why but regardless um, when you have you know eight passengers and you want nitrous you've got it so after taking everything apart I usually jump right into trying to figure out what I'm going to do with wheels and in this case um, I actually got lucky for a change it's probably the only part of the project that I actually like um, <coughs> excuse me is I had some I want to say I um, don't quote me on this, but I believe, because I never know exactly where they came from, but I believe they're the 55 gasser wheels. Uh, I use them a lot. They're the, the, the slotted. And I actually found some <laughs> that were the right. I don't have to cut them. I don't have to do anything. They fit. I don't have to hog out the wheel wells. I don't have to, um, you know, narrow the chassis. I don't have to do anything. They actually worked really well. And... Um, that very rarely happens so um, that was a pleasant surprise and probably the only one <laughs> in this project but that's usually uh, if you go watch any of my videos I always start with the stance in the wheels because to me that um, I usually don't have a freaking clue what I'm gonna do um, but once I find the wheels that I want and I get the right stance, then things start to kind of pop and it makes me uh, a little bit more motivated to figure out what I'm going to do. And it gives me some ideas of how I'm going to do it and what I need to do to make things work. Sometimes it's uh, just the actual stance that sets things apart. And to me, that's where the project always starts. So um, I put it in the citrus strip, which worked very well on this one. Um, it doesn't always work. I've had some that, actually I'm doing one right now that has been in there for quite a while and I've had to do it two or three times just because of the way it's made. So, But after it comes out of the citrus strip, I'll usually run under the hot water and then I'll take it down and use my wire brush attachment, which I have multiples. I have brass, I have regular steel. Uh, if you're gonna do this at home, wear glasses because the little pla uh, little sheer I don't know what the hell you want to call them shards or whatever they do fly off and they will get in your clothes and they'll get in your eyes and they'll get in your face and if you have a beard it'll get in your beard but more importantly it definitely gets in your clothes and when you they never come out when you wash your clothes and then you put them back on <laughs> it, it's still there so so what I'm trying to do as you can see I did one side already I'm trying to polish this 
And I wanted to go, if you guys remember, the Supervan, the California Cruising, was all chrome. So I wanted to kind of go with an all chrome look on this, which I knew was going to be subtle based on the fact that I wanted to put decals on this. And decals don't really show up on chrome unless it's got a lot of colors in them. Solid, big areas of color, which my logo does not have. So I kind of knew that going in it was going to be questionable so but I figured I'd go with it anyways and see what happened hence the reason I'm giving it a 4 out of 10 but this uh, metal polish cream from I think it's blue magic or something like that it works really well you just gotta go slow take your time I think I did this three times to make sure I got whatever I could get out out and polish it to the best of my ability I know I probably could have taken it a few steps further but again this was supposed to be a fun build not a frustrating build like it did turn into but the Dremel tool metal polish patience is your best friend I picked up this uh, army I think it's called army painter I don't know I got it off of Amazon I needed some more black paint and this is all that was available at the time and it actually works very very well I usually use Citadel uh, bad and black but the some reason they were out of stock and they were it was like a week out and I didn't have time to wait. And I wanted to do the, the only part that's really color on this was the front spoiler. So I left the base chrome, I left the body chrome. The only color I wanted was the chin spoiler in the front. So I decided to paint that black and that's what I'm doing with this new black paint, which I do like very much. Now, nothing else they'll use a bat and black in the citadel paints but um, for a secondary option this is very very good i definitely like it i actually picked up some airbrush colors that i'm dying to try from i think it's called model air or i don't know but i'm horrible with names and i don't pay attention to stuff i just buy it and if it works great if it doesn't then it goes in a pile of stuff that doesn't work anyways so after painting this um Oh, I'm here I am, I'm talking, but I never really talked about the Facebook group that we're doing this for. So what happened was about a year ago, I decided to, to start this group. for It's strictly for customers. I get people all the time that want to join that just like Hot Wheels cars. There's 8,000 freaking groups for that. Um, I decided I just wanted this to be for people who customize only. Hence, there's a few questions you have to answer when you join. And the group really, really worked out well. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> it's been a long day and everybody's great uh, I've s there's so many great customizers on there that's showing what they built that in such a close-knit group of people uh, it felt it feels good to, to have start you know granted it's not my group I just started it but and it belongs to everybody but uh, to be able to commemorate it with a one-year anniversary was was pretty fun so that's why I'm doing this. So I'm using the null oil, which is just a black wash. That's from Citadel to wash out the grill. Just add a little depth and a little uh, dimension to the actual build. Because again, there really is no color in this except for the headlights, which you saw. I use the Createx Pearl White. I'll put it over Chrome. In this case, it was already Chrome. If it's not, I'll use my Chrome pen to dot the headlights and then I'll put the pearl white over it after it dries it kind of gives it a little bit of dimension and gives the pearl white some depth and seems to be about as close as I personally can can get to getting clear headlights aside from using like glue or anything like that if you guys got any tips on how to make headlights look more realistic please comment down below so anyways to make a short story long <laughs> um, this even though this didn't turn out the way I expected it to part of the process of working on these things you know is more just learning experience this to me I, I kept it because it was a learning experience um, I printed out a bunch of decals I kind of I don't measure anything if you guys know me I don't measure anything I just kind of print out a bunch of different sizes and whatever works works uh, so I, I applied some logos on the side one on the back door I'm gonna end up doing one on the top window which is I got a blue tint to it so does that doesn't look very good either I mean it looks okay but nothing really stands out and 
I was looking for subtle, but this was entirely too, too subtle for me. But subtlety isn't always the best thing, but I went with it anyways. So I'm going to clear, I'm going to try to clear coat over it. The clear decals that I used, uh, were, uh, testers, I believe, they're, they look good. And they always look good on a painted surface. But when you put it over the bare metal, even though it's polished, it doesn't look good at all. Um, you can you can kind of see the outline. And I put the clear on pretty heavy. I mix, uh, to do one vehicle, I'll mix four parts clear, one part hardener. And it makes a decent amount. I could probably do a vehicle and a half with it. Uh, but I, I've had this set up here for almost a year now and I do a car a week so it goes a long way I think the actually the hardener I had to buy a separate one because I ended up I don't think I put the lid on tight enough and it got hard <laughs> so yeah, that's what she said but anyway so it was um, essentially a year's worth of stuff at least and actually it's been going on a year now and I still got a quarter left so I'd say maybe a, a year and a half I could probably get out of this so overall the clear even though I layered it on pretty thick didn't really give me the effect I was looking for so but I did clear the top of the window as well so which worked out really well I was kind of thinking the plastic was gonna melt <laughs> but it didn't so I end up this is pretty much what I have for pieces parts nothing fancy um, the close-ups will show exactly what I'm talking about and uh, <sighs> but anyways I, I digress so what I'm gonna end up doing is <laughs> I'm gonna probably go a little bit more in depth on this and um, talk through my process probably a little bit more I do some behind-the-scenes footages for the members only section So now that I'm past my cheap plug for my membership, the custom diecast Renegades and Hoodlums commemorative one-year anniversary van. And that's a mouthful. I'll probably never do that again. This is what it ended up with. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, again, I wouldn't kick it out of bed, but it's definitely not my cup of tea. Thanks for watching. I've got some video. I've got some pictures, which make it look a little bit better. Um, thanks for watching. I will catch you on the next one.